We are so happy to have everyone here. I'm Bill Hetrick, the chair of the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences here at Indiana University. On behalf of the faculty, the students, our staff, I would like to welcome you, the alumni, our distinguished guests, our award winners, visitors to the quasi-quicentennial of the department. We have 125 years of remarkable history, and I think it's worthy of a grand celebration like this. We're delighted that you've come to celebrate this momentous occasion, and we're deeply honored by your presence. It's been a great day. To begin the ceremony, I would like to introduce the president of Indiana University, Mr. Michael Fukrabi. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Well, it's, it really is a great pleasure to, to be here to help all of you celebrate uh, the anniversary of Indiana University's Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences, a, a program that is the, the oldest continual program of its kind in the United States and one that has had 125 years at the forefront of scientific study of human mental processes, motivation, and behavior. The, the origins of psychology, of course, have, as you know better than I do, have been much debated over the years. One school of thought holds that the roots of psychological thought and inquiry goes back thousands of years to at least the ancient Greeks. Others contend that psychology only really began with the first experimental studies that were conducted in the late 19th century. In the case of IU's psychology program, there is little question that the department can trace its origins to the early career of a man who was actually one of my predecessors as president of Indiana University, William Lowe Bryan. Bryan was Indiana University's 10th president, serving for a record 35 years from 1902 to 1937. He was, in fact, the longest serving president in our history by quite a long way, and was one of the longest serving presidents of any institution of higher education in the United States. And he was born right here in Monroe County, and he earned his undergraduate and master's degrees from IU in 1884 and 1886. His career was shaped in part by another of the great leaders in the history of Indiana University, and that was David Starr Jordan. Jordan was a professor of natural sciences and a model at the time of the new professional scientist. He was, Brian was in fact a member of a small club that Jordan formed, the purpose of which was to encourage students to pursue careers in research disciplines and in academia. Jordan advised promising IU students to earn advanced degrees at other institutions and then return to IU as faculty members, and Brian in fact followed exactly this advice. Brian earned a PhD in psychology at Clark University in Massachusetts, where he studied under G. Stanley Hall, who had established the very first American psychological laboratory at Johns Hopkins just a few years earlier. At Clark, Brian also helped organize the American Psychological Association and became one of its charter members. And he would later serve as the association's 13th president. Brian returned to IU as a faculty member and vice president of the university. Uh, and he, of course, established a psychologi psychological laboratory here at IU that was the first research and teaching laboratory devoted to experimental, experimental psychology in the Midwest, and only the second such facility established anywhere in the United States. It is now, of course, as I said at the outset, the oldest continually operating psychology lab in the US, and it was the nucleus for the department whose 125th anniversary we celebrate today. Of course, the psychology lab represents only the beginning of Brian's tremendous legacy at Indiana University. He presided over the transformation of IU from a small traditional liberal arts college into a modern research university. More schools were established at IU during his tenure than at any time until actually the last couple of years, and these schools remain among IU's core academic schools. President Bryan was also the leading advocate for IU's admission into the prestigious and elite Association of American Universities. 
In the years after World War I, Brian co-chaired the Memorial Fund Drive, which had a goal of raising what was a huge figure of a million dollars to finance three facilities, the original Memorial Stadium on 10th Street, Memorial Hall, which was originally a woman's residence hall, and the Indiana Memorial Union, all of which would honor those from IU who had served and fallen in the First World War. The administration building, Bryant Hall, is also named in Bryant's honor. It was dedicated in 1937 on the eve of his retirement. And of course, Bryant House, the traditional home of the president of Indiana University, is named for William O'Brien and his wife, Charlotte O'Brien. Built in 1924, Charlotte was actually instrumental in the design of the home. I, I, I should note too that there's a, a story that some of you may have heard. I heard the um, uh, late Chancellor Wells himself tell the story that, uh, that President Bryan had been living there and on his retirement when, when uh, Wells took over as president, uh, he asked if he could continue living there and, and intimated that his health was such that he wouldn't be expected to live much longer. Wells readily agreed and of course he lived another 20 years. <laughs> so Wells only got to spend less than 10 years actually in Brian House after, he, after Brian passed away. Earlier this, this, this afternoon I had the, the great pleasure again of meeting one of the department's most distinguished alumni, Richard Atkinson, the former renowned president of the University of California system. And he was telling me that when he was a graduate student here in the early 1950s, he actually had the opportunity, he may we'll talk about this, had the opportunity to meet William O'Brien when he was still living in the White House uh, on, on a walk. And just last week, Brian, who played baseball as an undergraduate, he was posthumously inducted into the IU Collegiate Athletics Hall of Fame as the only IU president to have led it in a sport at, at IU. Having been a cricketer in my youth, I just don't think it's ever going to happen to me. <laughs> my wife, Laurie, and I had the great pleasure of hosting Brian's great great nieces and Brian Weston, who's uh, shown in the slide, and Betsy uh, Weston Wondersloos, who travelled to Bloomington for the induction ceremony. And William and Charlotte had no children, and to the best of our knowledge, Anne and Betsy were the first descendants of William O'Brien to visit the Bryan House since William and Charlie actually were there. Bryan, of course, was succeeded as president by Herman B. Wells, who, of course, would become one of IU's most iconic figures. Wells was a great supporter of IU's faculty and really missed the opportunity to celebrate this success. Here you see in this, in this uh, slide a young Herman Wells very early in his presidency. This was stuck in 1939, and he's pictured here with William O'Brien, shortly after Brian's retirement, beside him, celebrating the 50th anniversary of IU's psychology department with the then current and former chairs as guest speakers. So this was your 50th anniversary of this particular slide. And one of the hallmarks of the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences has been the long-term commitment of the outstanding faculty and characteristic both encouraged and, of course, exemplified by Herman Wells. And here again you see uh, President Wells, by then he was Chancellor Wells in 1988, helping to celebrate 50 years later the department's 50th anniversary. Of course, it pictured our Irving Salzman and his wife Dottie, and of course, he served as chair of the department for 20 years, uh, another example of long-term commitment and loyalty of the department's faculty. Today, I will remain the same as it was in the Wills and Brian era, to provide the infrastructure, resources, and support that our faculty members and our programs need to succeed. And it is clear on this occasion, uh, this is an occasion of this historic milestone, it is evident that IU's Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences continues to flourish. The program continues to be ranked among the very best of its kind. Presently, it is ranked ninth in the nation for research productivity, and the clinical psychology program has been ranked 11th in the country 
out of 157 programs in the field. The Parkins outstanding faculty, and so many of you I know are here today, continue to build upon the advanced research conducted here by such luminaries as we have Skinner, Jacob Robert Cantor, Esther Thielen, and William K. Estes, who passed away not so long ago, who was, of course, the first AU faculty member to be appointed to the rank of distinguished professor. The lectures and discussions that many of you have heard today from the department's distinguished faculty and alumni are further evidence that the department truly is highly collaborative. It is an interdisciplinary enterprise that is truly at the vanguard of psychological experimentation and theory. That this anniversary falls at a time when President Obama has launched the Brain Initiative, a decade-long scientific effort to examine the workings of the human brain build a comprehensive map of its activity, serves to underscore the importance of the work in which so many of you are engaged. The exceptional careers of the department's many alumni, including those who will be honoured in just a few moments, are, to borrow from Herman Wells, the fruits of Indiana University's efforts in teaching and learning. So on behalf of the entire university, I congratulate the faculty, the students, the staff, the alumni of the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences on the department's truly tremendous success over the last 125 years. Today, the entire university community takes pride in the department's many accomplishments and the important role it continues to play in making Indiana University one of the finest universities of the 21st century. Congratulations on this historic and truly important milestone and best wishes for continued success in the department's next 125 years. Thank you.